Okay guys, so I thought I would commentate on my own match because one, no one else is going to commentate and two, it's probably a lot more entertaining if you hear what's going through my head as things are happening. Okay, making my way through and the first thing I thought when I get to the door right now is damn that is a small ass ring looking at the kid he's never done any pro wrestling before that's why this is not a pro wrestling match he's an MMA guy so I don't know what I'm in for right now but I know I better bring my A game so now we're just kind of feeling each other out um, just trying to see what he's got he's probably trying to do the same I can see he's targeting my, my left leg right from the beginning. He was trying to place these kicks, but they weren't that snappy. And even though I missed the first one he threw, I felt that it should be able to grab his leg at some point. You can see the wrestler in me there. I went straight for his neck, trying to get good neck control. See what I was saying about his kicks? I almost grabbed that one. I grab one there, look, and then straight to the ground. He's a, a better kicker than me, so I thought I'd better not, you know, go kick to kick with this guy, so try and ground him. Tried to get a grovet right there, but it slipped out. It was so hot in Tokyo, and it slipped out. Um, I had the grovet on, but he was able to stand up before I was able to crank it. So there he is again, I was able to grab his leg as you can see and take him straight back to the ground. And what was going through my head right there was, I know that we're not allowed to punch. And normally if I can get someone in, in that position, I'm just gonna start you know, the ground and pound. But because of you know the, the open hand rule, I, for whatever reason, I, just, I didn't punch and he was able to reverse. He had actually hit me in the balls earlier by accident and took that little opportunity. Here he is, he's lighting me up and went into the Imanati roll. What's going through my mind right now is the rope is close and in pro wrestling we would just grab it, but I know I can't grab it. And this hurt like hell. I tried hard to kick to get it off, wouldn't work. Right, he sticks his leg there and I tried to grab it, but it, he just kept putting it on. It was I was in excruciating pain right here and the only thing to do was escape. So I lost a point. So right now he's leading three to two. So remember, it's uh, the first person to zero points or who, someone who taps or is knocked out loses. So he's winning three to two because we started on three. Here he comes and lighten me up again. God, this hurt. And right now what's going through my mind is just cover up and, and then he knocks me down. He's now leading three to one. One more point and I'm gone. And I'm lying on the floor and I think, geez, this is not going to plan. Right now I know that I'm down. I've only got one more point to lose and I'm done. So I know I can't lose any more points. All right, fists up to show I'm ready to go. And that's where he makes his mistake. He goes for a single leg takedown and the ropes are behind me, so with chains, right? So I can't go anywhere. And that stun gun, I mean, it didn't really, it was, even though it was chained, didn't really stun him very well because he gets straight up. I decided to throw him into the wall and I really hurt myself on that. And he just gets straight back up. So I mean, obviously this stuff is not, you know, it's not pro wrestling. It's not, he's not trying to like sell a move or anything. But that knee to the head, that was, that really, that got him. I felt that connect on, on my in the front of my knee and actually my knee's got a big bruise on it, even though I was wearing knee pads that really got him right in the chin that was I thought he wasn't going to get up right there but he showed his spirit and he got up and you can see that he kind of leaves that arm out so I just went for it um, because this is one of my go-to moves a double wrist lock learned this from Josh Barnett and also in the snake pit in Tokyo and if I can't tap him out with this at least I know that I've hurt his arm enough, you know, to set up for the Fujiwara armbar, the Wakigatame. I was so hell-bent on getting an arm submission because I'd hurt his arm that I completely missed the, the rear naked choke right there. I could have just choked him out. I don't know why I didn't. And from here, I knew I had him. I knew I had him after I had the arm. 
Um, he was barely moving. He was gassed as hell. And he tries to roll out, which is the only way you can get out of this. But I put my shoulder down, stop him from rolling out and tap him. Doctor called in because I really cranked that armbar at him. When I, I need him in the head, it really hurt my knee. So I'm limping on even though my left ankle is is hurting. My right knee is killing me right now. I come over and I just, you know, want to make sure he's okay because, you know, we just went to war. But, you know, at the end of the day, sportsmanship is very important. And this is backstage at the end. And guys, that was a little bit of a rundown on, not on my first UWF match, but certainly my most recent 